Hello, welcome to another Pedal Out video. So today we're going to be doing a very, very quick video of the one of the first drives and one of the new Pedal Out fleet, the Lotus Evora S. Hello, so welcome to another Pedal Out video. A very, very special video, I think it's fair to say. So this is my new Lotus Evora. Uh, it's not new, new, it's new to me. New car, new to the Pedal Loud fleet. This will eventually replace the E93 BMW M3, which is still for sale if you are interested. I'll maybe put an ad in the uh, description below. Please go and have a look at that and have a look at my other videos on that E93 BMW M3. Anyway, what I thought I would do is a very, very quick first impressions video of the Lotus Evora S. This is a 2010 model in laser blue. It runs the, I don't want to say standard, it's the Lotus tuned Toyota Camry engine, three and a half litre V6. And the brake horsepower, specific figures, I can't remember, mid 300s slightly less than the bmw m3 um, but having said all of that um, it's not that much of a come down really because it is quite it has to be said a different car so i thought i would do um a bit of a first impressions and i suppose doing a first impressions video of a british sports car which is what this is um, apart from the Toyota engine and what have you and Honda Civic door handles over there and Ford switch gear for the folding mirrors um, they always borrow parts from um, different manufacturers of course and Vauxhall oh no Ford these are Ford aren't they these indicator stalks so rather than raiding the Vauxhall parts bin <coughs> Lotus have moved on and they're raiding the Ford parts bin, but that is to me is all part of the charm. I've never ever owned a Lotus. Um, I've always wanted to when I was growing up. My father, I'll put a picture in, had a Lotus XL, a 1989 Lotus XL SE. That was a five speed manual. I think it had a 2.2 uh, Vauxhall derived engine in it, and that was mated to a Toyota gearbox. and. Um, and it was really nice and it went like stink and actually it had cream leather interior and the smell of this car inside which has black leather is not too dissimilar so it's quite a nice kind of almost rite of passage moment for me driving a blue british car blue british lotus that's almost um, very similar to the 2 plus 2 Lotus XL SE that my dad had back in probably 1991. It was maybe two years old um, back then. And I think he paid about 26,000 pounds for it. Paid a little bit more than that for this, um, but here we are, we're driving around. Um, and it's, I think, fair to say, having test driven this car, the first thing you notice is um, just how much of a part of the car you actually feel. And I know that sounds pretty obvious, but it's not derived from a BMW 3 Series, a 3 Series like the BMW M3. And I don't mean that with any disrespect to the BMW M3. They are fantastic cars, so please don't slate me for that. But this thing is ground up, purpose-built, sports car, totally and utterly it is. Um, the newer Lotus Evora, the 400, have been made even more accommodating to, to drivers because of that ground up nature. The whole Evora point of it is it's between kind of a bit more uh, getting away from the whole kind of bare bones Elise experience and giving you a bit more luxury. And that is what I really like about this car. Having said that, the sills on the side getting in and out are quite high, but on the, the new 400, they've kind of fixed that. It's a bit easier to get in and out. Um, but to me, again, that's all part of this car's charm. It's all part of sitting down in, in it, low down in it, close to the ground. The steering wheel is great. The visibility is great. For the money, you've got a mid-engined and you've got, um, you've got two seats in the back, which um, for me, I'll say it in all my videos, I need because I've got two kids. Um, so it's, it's just a no-brainer. There are um, extremely few mid-engined, 
two plus two coupe cars in the world the Ferrari Mondial is the other one um, so it's it's great to have a mid-engine car of which I think this again first impressions looking in the rear view mirror you get that kind of red spray painted engine cover um, which just looks really really cool and you get like a little letterbox thing you feel like you're in uh, a mini supercar which I don't know it's arguably kind of what I was looking for dare I say something a little bit different and unique although when you are in here you don't really think about the looks because um, you're too busy driving the thing the, the steering on this thing is nicely weighted it's not heavy the ride is exemplary I think it's fair to say um, if you've done enough research or you've watched enough Lotus Evora videos already you'll know that the suspension on these things is wonderful Lotus did such a good job meaning you can just drive it around like I am now pootling around back roads and you don't feel any discomfort at all you kind of sat low I mean these figure hugging, hugging racing seats are just brilliant um, yeah and it's it's just really cool I love the um, the dash you've got the uh, people moan about the reflection in the dash I've yet to kind of see that as a problem I'm sure it will be in the sunny weather but I like the dials they're all nice and small and neat and purposeful it's got the uh, kind of aftermarket uh, big doubled in head unit type thing fitted in there uh, which is great you've got your sat nav and your Bluetooth connectivity and everything like that the wing mirrors are quite big which I quite like as well because it means you get a nice um, view of the fairings of the back kind of wings out the back um, which just you know it makes you know and realize and feel that you're in something special and a bit different gear change isn't uh, probably the finest but it's all right I quite like it I mean it's not doesn't again it never had the best reputation this car has recently had a lot of work done on the gearbox new clutch new gearbox um, etc so it's all kind of sorted and ready to go um, and it feels pretty good to me it's got a reversing camera so you slap it in reverse you can see where you're going um, the heater works nicely it's nice and warm in here not cold um, so I'm driving along in a Lotus comfortably which is great so yeah, it's um, the decision to buy this car so far seems to be one that's bearing out okay. You've got a little computer as well, which tells you uh, your MPG. I won't look at that, your average speed and your trip distance and your range. So I filled this car up, cost me about 63 quid to brim it. Yeah, we've got 340 miles left to go on it. So we'll see how we go. Anyway, yeah, so that was it. This is um, quite a short but sweet introductory video. I'll be doing more of an in-depth review of this car when I've owned it a bit longer and I'm a bit more familiar with it and I can tell you a lot more about it. But for now, I'm kind of in that, what is essentially a new car moment of um, extreme, extreme excitement, but also <laughs> coupled with, um, nerves and and nervousness um nervousness driving it around just getting used to it becoming familiar with it nervousness in case it blows up i'm sure it won't it's a toyota engine um so yeah it's a, it's a strange day indeed but also quite a good day anyway thanks for watching if you like this video if you like lotuses subscribe if you like audi tt mark ones subscribe if you like bmw m3s hopefully maybe i'll do a for sale video for the bmw m3 if i can find the time i'd like to do that it's still for sale if anybody is interested it needs nothing doing it's got red novella leather i think i've said this before it's got aftermarket wheels all oh, pop from the exhaust did you hear that and it's in space gray and it's the e93 convertible model um there you go i've rattled that off thanks for watching Give it a thumbs up if you've liked it. Please, please, please support the channel by subscribing. See you all again soon. This is a nine-year-old in the back of a Lotus Evora. Let's just get zoom out for perspective. So you can see you probably get an adult in there. Well, you would get an adult in there. But uh, you're, oh, you want a booster seat. So, I mean, you've got a good three inches there and your knees are, so that seat can go back. How is it compared to the Mark 1 Audi TT? Audi TT. Is it better? Mm -hmm. That or worse in the back? Nothing worse. Would you?
Oh, well, they're both the same, actually. They're both the same, yeah, I would say they're so. They're both the same. Except they're both worse. They're both worse. Well, yeah, it's not a Volvo XC90, is it? I know, it's not a Volvo XC90! 